there has been so much revelation given to him lately that you are doing and stirring up new things inside of him. And God, I thank you for um, the word that he is going to deliver this morning. That from the revelation that he has experienced, it's going to spark revelation in us. That he is going to stir us up to love and good works this morning. He's going to stir us up to love you more, to seek you more, to seek and keep seeking. Lord, I thank you for his life and his vision. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Are you guys ready for the word of God? Okay, so I have some uh, vacant chairs. If you can just move on the people at the back, would you please move? Uh, we're going to have a great time. The, uh, the doctor gave me a prescription of this uh, reading glass. Okay, but anyway, I'll try. I'll try. Um, to work it out. But anyway, I have contact lens and I have glasses. Like, can you do both? Yeah, yeah, you need to have those right now. Okay. But anyway, um, are you excited? You are really ready for the Word of God? Are you gonna be? Yes. Um, before that, I have this, I have a cool haircut. Okay, I don't say that. Because it's so cool because uh, I found uh, this one yesterday. So I went to this, I usually go to a barber uh, in uh, Dub and it costs us $25 or more to have a haircut. Um, so I, yesterday me and my daughter went out and um, we, I saw in a 107 in between 23rd, check it out, 23rd and one, uh, 23rd and 10th Street, there is wooden nickel. Did you see that? There is a small uh, barber there. It's like two months old man named Bobby. Okay, and it's uh, so he did my haircut, and it's just like, uh, and you know how much is it? <laughs> oh my gosh! So I'm a cheapo guy. Uh, it's eight dollars. Oh my gosh, eight dollars. <laughs> yes, eight dollars. Like, well, now I got your attention, isn't it? Eight dollars. This man is like 20, 20 plus uh, guy. Uh, he just told me, "Hey, um, could you just tell me can I broadcast it? I will broadcast you to the to the rest of River of Life." Okay. So so anyway, it's eight dollars, and I said, and then I can give like double the, the tip. You can double. The, see if you can. So please go there. Okay. I don't know the place yet. It said eight dollars. You will see in one o seven. Okay. When you drive going uh, going to the courthouse, you will see that. Thank you, Brianna. So that's that's my week. Just the haircut and my uh, contacts. But anyway, let's imagine, imagine yourself right now that we're going to have a buffet. Anybody here like, uh, uh, like Chinese food? Okay, a Chinese food people. Anybody here love Italian? My wife love Italian. Anything about pasta? She love it. How about love Mexican food? You know, if you... Uh, I think the best food in the world is the Mexican food, isn't it? The best one, the best one. But anybody, any, like Indian food? Anybody like Indian food? Yeah, not, not much, okay. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, imagine yourself that we're going to have a buffet, an international buffet of the food you want. Now you choose what you want. Either you want to get a lot or just a little bit, okay? Just, it's up to you. Uh, this morning to get what your portion is because I believe God is wanting to feed you this morning are you hungry come on church are you hungry for the word of God come on are you hungry for more come on he is the bread of life he is the bread we need the manna today for our wool, our wool wig Amen? So let's just uh, enjoy the presence of God. I'm going to conclude this. This is going to be my last day to preach for uh, this series. Of, we're doing that for seven, seven weeks of series about faith. Anybody just been blessed about it? I want to hear a testimony. Like one thing that you get from this or something the Lord did to me. Anybody here? I was like, this topic really helped me a lot. Anybody? Okay. Short? Short. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I just recently graduated from school. I, um, I didn't have enough faith in myself, but God had faith in me. I passed my NCT test, and then I went and applied for a job. They told me they start everybody at $8, but because I had faith in God, I said I wanted $8.50, and I ended up with 9 Woo! 
Come on. Give me five. Give me five. See, this is, this is working. Anybody else like, hey, I just, I, I, I'm learning from this topic and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, receive, I'm seeing supernatural. Anybody, anybody else? Come on. Are, are we going to extend this again for another eight weeks if that's helping you? Anybody has like, oh, this teaching is really it's good. Or maybe it's not. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Anybody? That's, we're going to need to be testifying. Okay? That's a form of faith. Hello, sister. You are bold enough to say it. Okay. Um, just this last week, I had to go to Houston. Um, there evaluated me for a kidney transplant. And so they said, well, you know, you're going to go, we're going to pay for the hotel, but you have to um, put down a deposit for the hotel. Mm -hmm. So I thought, God, how am I going to do this? This is going to be like $150. And I really can't afford it. And, you know, and then to have to pay for meals and get around. And I thought, well, God, you have to take care of me. Because, you know, I, and I came, actually, I came before, the day before I left, I came and I had just gotten my check and I said, you know, maybe I should save this money for, for the trip because mm -hmm. God will understand if I don't pay my tithes. But, you know, in the back of my mind and my heart, I said, no, you have to pay your tithes. Mm -hmm. So I paid my tithes and I said, you know, praise God, I'm, you know, you're going to get me through this. And when I got back, I checked my bank account, and the hotel didn't even charge me for the deposit because it said, we're going to charge you, and then it's going to take 30 days to give it back to you. Mm -hmm. But the money was still there in the bank, so praise the Lord. Woo! Yes. <laughs> God bless you, sister. All right. Thank you for those testimony. So are you ready to eat? Okay. We talked about John 11 last time, and we're half of that uh, topic, so we're going to unveil it. We're just going to... You know, when you eat the, uh, like the fish, you want to get it from the bones, you know? Only the Filipinos does that, isn't it? It's like really, or you're, you're eating, it's like, uh, like eating pajitas, you put the salsa, and it's going to your somewhere, isn't it? So we're going to unveil the, the food today, okay? So ready? So we talk about here in John 11 about the story of a, this is a, a powerful story. They said it's a capstone of all the miracles. Capstone is the, the pinnacle, the, the, the highest form of, of some of the miracles that the Lord has done. So John 11 is a, a story about Lazarus. So we talk about that Lazarus named Lazarus. Uh, talk to, uh, read with me. A man named... Come on. You don't have... Are you hungry? Come on, show it that you're hungry. One, two, three, go. Okay, stop it. So the thing is that there is a, uh, a brothers and sister, Lazarus, who else? Mary and Martha, to their friend of Jesus. Oh, they are like BFF. So they are BFF of Jesus. So now Jesus was in a place where he's preaching. Now Lazarus gets sick. Do you know that Lazarus gets sick? So now they, made, uh, they text Jesus. They sent a message to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, uh, your friend is sick. Okay, so, um, so this is what the story is all about. They're the friends of Jesus. Do you know even though you're a friend of Jesus, you can also get sick? And things, even though you're a friend of Jesus, sometimes things not doing well. Everybody has tribulation. It doesn't mean that you are Christian or your best friend of Jesus. You will not have friend. You have no problem. You will have problems. So this is what happened. So next is, but when Jesus, one, two, three. When Jesus heard about it, said Lazarus' sickness will not end. Okay, so what happened is, so he heard about the message, and he said here, he loved them so much, but he didn't go. 
What kind of love is that? Isn't it like, if, if I'm a friend of Jesus and I, that, that my, 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 I'm get, uh, like my mom is getting, dying, what happened here is Jesus still stayed in that place. Additional two days. It doesn't make any sense. Am I right? Why? Because God has a purpose. There is a purpose here why God want, want to delay a little bit. Sometimes in your life, the things that you're asking for, it's not happening in the timing you want. Sometimes we miss the timing of God. You thought it's a timing of God, but it's not the timing of God yet. It might be the right person. It may be the right job. It might be the right church. But sometimes it's not the right timing. Timing is of God. And He knows that. And sometimes we don't know it. Okay? Sometimes we need to rest on Him. So this is what happened. So He stayed. Now, the thing about here is for the glory of God. All the things that happen in our life, either bad or good, is for the glory of God. Because God wants to be glorified. So what happened is that, um, so let's go further. So let's, let's pick it up in 7, okay? So when Jesus arrived at the Bethany, so he said, let's go back. Because uh, uh, I know that uh, he is uh, dead already. He was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. So what happened is that why it takes four days for Jesus to come back and see Lazarus? Okay, this is what happened. In that culture, God is looking on the culture. See, God is a God of relevance. He sees what the culture is. So what happened at that time, rabbi teaching believed that if a person dies, their soul stayed there for three more days. You got it? So three more days roaming around. So when Jesus is there in that place and ro uh, raised Lazarus, the people will say, oh, that's normal. Because that's our belief, that it's already there. But if after fourth day, the fourth day is really totally gone. On the fourth day, Jesus raised Lazarus. Beyond the culture. Beyond what they're, they're, they're talking about. Because he's teaching the people. To God, there is nothing impossible. Your situation will be so dark, but God can produce something. From nothing to something. That's our God. So are you getting this? Now, when, uh, so, so Jesus arrived at Bethany. So the, verse 20, when Martha got a word that Jesus was coming. So when he heard, when she heard that Jesus is coming, I, I love Martha. Martha, she went to meet him. What she did, she run, leave her She's been crying and, you know, mourning about her brother. But what she did, she ran straight to Jesus. Let me ask you, when you're facing situation, when you're facing problem, where, who do you run? Do you run fast to Jesus or away to Jesus? Let's learn them up to Martha. Martha ran, okay? So she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Mary still Mary. But you know what? This is our story of two sisters before, wherein Mary was in the feet of Jesus. In the feet of Jesus and listening to the teaching of Jesus. And Martha is busy doing something. See, sometimes you might be Feeling like you are, oh, I'm victorious. This, I'm victorious. I know God. I know. But one time, they will come a point in your life. You'll be tested. You'll be tested with your relationship with God. You don't say you're so spiritual right now. That's why the Bible says, don't, tell, don't think that you are so high that you're standing right now. We cannot boast in our situation, our walk with the Lord. We cannot just, that's why we need to have a heart saying, God, I want you. God, I need you. Even though you're full right now with God, you still have the, the heart to say, God, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want to follow you. Sometimes in our life, we tend to be just like contented. Like normal. I believe God is speaking to us. 
God wants to rock your boat. God wants to sh shake you, to shake you so that you come out from your comfort zone. Because when comfort is there, when there's a lot of things happening. Anybody here in that situation right now, you're just, everything is status quo. No activity, nothing at all is happening. Watch out. Because God wants you to rock your boat. Amen? Okay. So Martha said to Jesus, so now, this is what I like about Martha. Martha have a choice to stay in the house. But she made to meet Jesus. By meeting Jesus, the, one of the best praise statement that the Lord released in his lifetime was said to Martha. Oh man, we'll, we'll see that in verse later, in the verse 25. So she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. So Mary's still mourning, okay? Uh, I don't blame her, okay? Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you only had been here, my brother would not have died. So, see, she loved the Lord. She wanted to meet the Lord. But what she did, she blamed Jesus. Anybody here? Like, blame, blame game Christianity. And I was like that. I, I, during our marriage, our married life, we've been married for 20 years now, this February. Yeah. 19 years, 20 this February. Yes, rejoice on that. It's not a perfect marriage, but in the first 19 years of our marriage, <laughs> no, first, maybe first 10 years, I was a person who always blamed her. See, it's your fault. It's yours. Like, I, I, I don't take responsibility. I don't take that. I just blame. I blame everybody. I blame my mom. I blame everything. I blame the. If you are a Christian who loves to blame, you are immature. If you're a person, you blame everything, that's a signal that you are not in the atmosphere of faith. You blame everything. You blame the weather. You blame the Obama. You blame yourself. You blame uh, the mayor. You blame the too bright. You know, Olympic. What's that? You know, you blame the Olympic. You blame, you blame everything. Everything in your life just blame game. And that's a sign of no faith. And the activity of God cannot work without faith. So that's what you're going to do. Take responsibility I don't know I just leave the church because I do, I'm not being fed what that's the craziest thing I ever heard being a pastor I don't want I don't go to that church because I'm not being fed you are just immature who doesn't want to be corrected and want to go with your silliness and your childness from one church, from one another to another. Go and feed yourself. We will not put the, put in your mouth, open your mouth. And then do you want us to move your, your, your throat and all these things? No. Or do you want us to chew your food and authorize your food? No. You need to go to the Word of God, read the Word of God early in the morning, wake up, memorize the Word of God, speak the Word of God, and then you'll be robust. Don't blame the church. Don't blame your cell group. Don't blame your small group. Don't blame your coach. Don't blame your pastor. Don't blame anybody. Blame yourself. Come on. You came here for a reason. Because enough is enough. Yeah. Do you like this preaching? Do you think that I'm just, I'm just shouting? I told myself last week when I'm studying, maybe this Sunday I will not shout. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will try not to shout. So I told my children while we're eating, let me not shout this, this Sunday because the preteens are... Uh, I love you, preteens. Any preteens here? They got scared about me. Uh, what's happening there? What's happening there? It's only Pastor Bob preaching. <laughs> but sometimes you need to shout. Do you know that Jesus yelled to Lazarus? He didn't say, come out. No? <laughs> Please, come out. Come out. No. 
No, 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 no. Lazarus, come out! Sometimes you need to shout. Sometimes you need to yell up your problem and tell to that mountain, be moved. You can shout in the ball game, you can shout in the Olympic, you can shout everywhere, but you can shout in the church. Come on. Are you liking the message? Yeah. See, this is the mark of a good message. Not because of the preacher is good. When you're getting the message, and when it's really going to the bones, it's so, it's like, it's like raspa. It's like chamoyada. It's like, it, is it good or bad? It's like, it make you crazy. It's just loco loco. It's like, it just make you confused because it's a sweet, sweet, sour, salty, spicy. Uh, it's beyond worlds. They should make an ice cream on that. Do we have an ice cream like that? Okay. Okay. We're gonna make one. We'll make one. <laughs> patent it. Patent it. Chamoyada ice cream. Woo! <laughs> anyway, I have only 15 minutes. So anyway, can we do overtime today? Yes. All right. Okay. Anyway. Um. So where are we? So she start blaming Jesus. If you just came here, come on. If you came here, my, my brother is still alive. There's a lot of things happening in our life. And sometimes we just need to accept it and move on. Stop blaming your mom. Stop blaming your dad. Stop blaming the society. Stop blaming everybody. Blame the devil. And sometimes stop blaming the devil. Sometimes we, he, we blame about the devil. The devil give me this. The devil give me that. The devil give me that. Actually, because you allow it. The devil's under your feet. You just need to stumble the devil. Amen? Okay, let's go. So, next verse. Okay. Okay. Had been there for but okay, and then verse 22 is powerful. So he she's speaking to Jesus. If he just came here early, then my brother, then my brother is alive. Then verse 22 said, But even now, but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Something about Martha that she wake up from her blaming game and wake up and spark said, mm, Verse 22. It's something like the Holy Spirit just smacked her. And she began to speak the word of God and said, But even now, I know and I know and I know that God will give you whatever you ask. And this is what I call, but even now, faith. But even now, anointing. What is this? I am poor right now, but even now, I know that God is my provider. Even now, anointing. Even now, faith. If you're sick now, you will say, but now I know. Jesus is my healer. By strife, I'm healed. Now I'm depressed. I am sad. But even now, I even say that Jesus is my joy. That the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, you're entitled to speak, but stop that. The word but needs to come. And the word of God needs to be released. But even now, faith. So suddenly, she began to speak the word. Amen? And she began to rely to Jesus. Now, sometimes in your life, God sets you up. You're set up. A lot of things happen in your bad things. God put you in a setup. Maybe divorce. God has placed you in a set up position so that you will say, God, I can overcome this. I can overcome this. My life is not based on that man. I can do it with my God, with my children. I can do it. See, the Lord put you in a setup, in a set of situation that He will show who He is, that He is a good God, 
that he will strengthen you, that he empowers you great, and doing great mighty things. He sets you up. Now let's go to the verse 23 right now. Now, Jesus is speaking to her, to Martha. Jesus told her, your brother, brother will rise again. So, and then she responds, yes. Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Because she knows that on the last day, everyone will be resurrected, including you, including me. So she is thinking about that. Okay, so she's still not in that 100% mode of faith, but God is a good God. He, he accommodates you. He accommodates where you are. But the thing is, you need to start. Amen? So then, Jesus told her, this is the most powerful, verse 25. See, if she stayed at home and, and cried and just be blame game, she will never experience the best talk. The best, my most powerful word that Jesus released in the New Testament, this verse. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Man, if Jesus will say that to me in person, I'm set up. Now, if I choose to stay in my bed and go and just be Sad, can I receive that? No. There's something about your violent faith. Yeah. There's something about you came to the church this morning. There's something about going to the presence of God. There's something about coming to the presence of God. Come to me. Come nor near, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Yeah. What we do, do is that come, just, Jesus, come, come to me. No, you need to come to Jesus. That's why parents, mom and dad, what's your responsibility is push your children to come to the presence of God. That's the best thing you can do. If you need to bribe them, you need to pay them to come to the presence of God, do that. Because in that presence, it, they will be to have a chance. I'm just, I'm so blessed. You know, my two children, they're not perfect, but they love the presence. They know when we're not in the presence. Because I, we push them. Even though if there's a soccer game, there's no soccer game. Did we do soccer game? No, we don't. <laughs> yeah. Don't be some, It's good to go to soccer game, all the game, game, game. But first, put God first. Bring them to party culture. Bring them the presence of God. That's the best thing you can do. Now, if you need to spank them, spank them. Yeah, I said that, isn't it? Bribe them, I will, I, will, I will give you five dollars. Do you know Toyang? <laughs> the little Toyang, where's Juji? Anna Victoria. Anna Victoria, I, was, I heard this. Anna Victoria is receiving five dollars just going to party culture. Is it five dollars, sis? She is bragging about that she has a lot of money, but now she was hooked in party culture. That only you are smart, mom. Because what happened, of course, the kids will not go, go but bribe them after that. Oh, the presence of God. If the presence of God will change every crooked ways. A lot of people say, oh, come, you go to church because you're looking for a girl. Yes, come, go look for the girls. Eventually, it will change your heart. Because nobody can stand on the presence of God. Even your wrong motive, God will make it straight. Come on. He said, hey, there are a, lot of, a lot of people telling me, hey, there, there's a lot of beautiful girls. Yes, there's a lot of beautiful girls. Are you all beautiful? Yes. How, about, how about men? Hey, uh, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> Guapo. Yes, that's why. You know what? Bring them to the presence of God. Oh, this is another topic. <laughs> Let's move on. He said here, I am the resurrection. Is there anything that's dead in your life right now that needs to be resurrected? Is your vision has been uh, uh, going down? Is your passion to God is falling down? It needs to be resurrected. This is your time to be resurrected. And Jesus is the answer. The, 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 the alcohol is not the answer. Sex is not the answer. Having boyfriend to boyfriend, no, no it's not. Having relationship, oh my gosh, uh, let me talk about this. 
Sometimes we want to be well with the help of other person. You don't, your relation, if, if you're a person, you are, you are single and you're looking for someone to fulfill you, man, the only one you can fulfill is Jesus Christ. So the problem is we go to relationship upon relationship upon relationship and we end up miserable because that person is also bankrupt inside. And you're trying to... I heard one of the members said, I, if the Lord will not give me this one, I will leave. My gosh. Put, put, sense, put sense in your... Gosh. That's why we need discipleship. Isn't it? Every relationship is just for the glory of the Lord. It's just a plus. The one who can content you, the one who can really understand you, is God. So what's, what's now? Be in total in love with God. And that will provide the person. Don't look for that person. Try to... Uh, dating. Dating. Okay, are you from different country? Okay, yeah. We'll meet. <laughs> Are you in Mexico or whatever? Oh, oh, oh. Unless the Lord told you. But some people really, by the Spirit of God, will listen. See, you got to need the Holy Ghost. You need to know if you need to do that or not. But sometimes we are so clueless. We go to relationship. Oh, I'm so down. And then uh, uh, you thought you found the right person, but it's not the right person. It's the horrible devil. <laughs> and, and suck the life inside of you. You have only 10% life and then you're like negative 90 now of life. Come on, grow up. Why don't you suck the presence of God? And be filled with the presence of God. When the right person comes, you're full of the presence. Mm. Mm. Yes, Lord. And then what you do, you don't tell, hey, the Lord told me, the to Lord told me that you are mine. You are mine. And the Lord spoke to me. Baloney, don't listen to that. Because you go and listen to the Holy Ghost. Is it the right time, Lord? And then go to your, uh, your disciple, the coaches. Hey, this is, the, this is the right thing to do. Let's sense it. And then they will pray with you. See, if we do that, simple thing. We, you are not an ordinary people who will just like the world's doing. Amen? Like sex upon sex upon sex upon sex. We're just like nor Christianity is the same as the world now. Man, we have different standards. Amen? Okay. Now, um, next, um, 27. Yes, Lord, you told, uh, she told him, I have always believed you. You are my Messiah. See, that conversation now, Mary's, uh, Martha's heart changed. She, said, she began to say, I have always believed you are the Messiah. Her perception of the Lord Jesus Christ has changed. The Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. So this is what happened. Uh, she, she had an encounter with Jesus. She had an encounter with Jesus. What happened that after all this thing, the Lord spoke to her about resurrection and the life. What she did, she ran back to the house and woke up her, her crying sister. Wake up. Get out from that. Stop that silly thing. And then what she did, then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourner, mourner and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. If you really had an encounter with Jesus, you don't stop by yourself. You get out from your comfort zone. Get out, get your family. Get out all, all your friends and bring them to the presence of God. And tell them, hey, I'm telling you, there is a person who can change you. And his name is Jesus. That's a real encounter. Amen? So Mary immediately, so Mary has total change. So much anointing of Martha. That she met Jesus and spoke this dialogue. See, when you have intimacy with the Lord, when you are weak and you start coming to the presence of God, not the alcohol, not the, 
the drugs or all these things. When you have Jesus, you get the life. You get everything. And then when you get it, you're full of anointing and it's released to the next person. And that's what happened to Mary. She immediately, Mary immediately went to him. There is like, like transparency of spirit. There's so much contagious that happened. Okay? So that's now what happened. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said again, Lord, if only you have been here, blame game again. If you only been here, my brother would not have died. How about you? What's happening with your life? Have you start blaming someone? Is your spouse? Is it your future? What are you blaming about? When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up with him. So now there's a lot of mourner there. And then she started um, start crying again, Mary, and the Lord was moved. Okay? A deep anger welled up with him, and he was deeply troubled because there's so much unbelief. So there's like two emotions here that Jesus is experiencing. Remember, Jesus is 100% human, is 100% God. So now she feels it. Uh, he feels it. And then he was deeply troubled. And then what he did after he seeing all this crying and mourning, where have you put him? He asked them. So where is Lazarus? When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Jesus experienced that. And then come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. This is the shortest uh, verse in the Bible. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. Yes. Can you memorize that? <laughs> what is the one verse that you can remember? John 11. Jesus. Wow, you're so scholar. You're good. You're good. That's you learn from Pastor Bob, okay? John 11. And what does it mean? So what does it mean, though? It means God is full of compassion. When you cry, He cries. He knows your heartbeat. Yes. Now, 35, when Jesus said, see how he loved him. The Jews found out and they said, oh, he, he really loved him. Next, 38, Jesus once more deeply moved, moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, Martha said, the sister of dead man, by this time, there is a bad odor. For he has been there for four days. So this is what happened. So there, uh, who is it? Lazarus wrapped inside the tomb, and then there is a big stone. Okay, Jesus said, "Move out the stone." I said, "When I'm studying this, Lord, why are you asking the people to move out the stone? Are you a god that you can just say or just let come alive, and then uh, Lazarus will come in the stone like that? Is it? Can why, why, why asking the people to move the stone? Did you, if you're really a powerful God, can you do something like that we will not do anything? <laughs> but see, this is what happened. In every miracle, God wants your involvement. In, he can do that. He can just do, Lazarus, come forth and go through the stone. And break the stone into half. And then, and then start unwrapping all your bandages. All your... No. He asked the people to remove the stone. Why? Because he want to partner with you. It takes faith. Because it takes faith. You want miracles? Faith without words is dead. You don't just pray. You work. You hold, hold on on your confession and really stand until you get it. So, so what happened? Okay, what he said there, what? Are you getting this? 
Oh, I love it. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, he doubted her again. If I will be Jesus, I will smack Martha. <laughs> Can I be real? How many times I told you? You're so cool. It's like if you're like, oh, a lie. It's like, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm not Jesus. Uh, just like, if you're like, mm, if, uh, yeah, what? what? Okay, Martha said, he smells. He smells four days. He smells. See, if God said it, that smell become eternity smell. Or cool waters, you know. Or something smell good. Breeze. But if you really believe. So here again, doubting. And then, then Jesus said, did I not tell you? <laughs> I feel sorry to Jesus here. Because <laughs> then you said, did I just tell you that if you believe, maybe nicely, Jesus like me. Did I, tell, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Do you think that's what Jesus said to Martha? Wow. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Sometimes we're uh, hard-headed. And still God loves you. You know, like Peter, you know, he loves those people who are head, you know, loving, imperfect people who continue love in the presence of God. This is Martha loves the presence of God. Even though how inconsistent she is, the Lord loves you. The Lord loves her. Amen? So she took, uh, she, he, they took away the stone. No, they believe God. So they took away the, Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. The most powerful way to act your faith is this. Thanksgiving. It is your expression of your faith. If you're a person who are ungrateful, if you're a person you don't appreciate things, you're a person who doesn't walk in faith. But if you're a person who are very appreciative of all the things the Lord has done to you, you just thank God I have, thank God for this church, thank God for everything. When you start thankful heart, a gratitude heart, what will happen? You are creating an atmosphere of supernatural. You want your small group to be powerful? Start thanking God for everything that He's doing. Not only He's about to do, but all the things that he, he promises. When you have that atmosphere, if your household is a household of really loving, the uh, thankful heart, you are welcoming the supernatural. But if you are a person who says, oh, no, oh, I don't have this, I don't have this, then negativity in the house, it attracts devil. You want to attract devil or you want to attract supernatural? It's up to you. So what happened is this. Jesus started praying, thanking God. There's, Lazarus is still in the, in the tomb. Yeah, they removed the, the, the stone, but Lazarus is still inside. So what happened, when he started praying, Jesus is, is teaching us about this. When you're asking for something from God, you battled with thanksgiving. You battled heaven, you bombard heaven with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for my God's will. Thank you for the wife you're about to give me, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, she is a person who loves the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the new house you are in apartment. Thank you for a new house. You declare it, declare it. Thank you, Lord, for the new job you're about to give me. If you're in college, you start saying, Lord, thank you, the best job ever. You don't wait until you finish college. You begin to thank God. Oh, my gosh. If you have that heart, it's just welcoming heaven. It's just, the, you know, heaven saying, oh, who's the, let me see, let me see the planet Earth who has some people who love to be thankful. Oh, something, someone in McAllen in Root Road. 
very thankful heart give heaven. But you see, who, who is this person blaming everything, blaming heaven, blaming everything's blaming? Oh, don't give that heaven to him. And then what happened when he heard that Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus come out, and the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped in a strip in linen and the cloth around the face. So there's like tied up there and then also here. There's two a set of clothes. So what happened, in, and then he started jumping. <laughs> That's scary. <man. laughs> he came out on the tomb and then jumping. <laughs> Imagine that. It's just like when you read the Bible, you just, wow, what happened? And there's a lot of, wow. Like, and then if I, if I will get my snapshots <laughs> and all, my, all my, my video. And then I will, I, will, I will ask, how does he smell? Does he smell smells good still or what? See, so anyway, and Jesus said, take off the grave, close, and let him go. See, I said, Lord. Why are you going to ask him again, the people, the, the, the disciple, to take off the clothes? You can, you, can do, you can do it. You can just come out, let go of your clothes, and put a, a brand new suit. Zoom. 